Have you ever wondered about the mysteries of cardinal flow exponentials in mathematics? The ethereal treasures of this realm are held within mathematical shells, waiting for us to unlock their secrets. Imagine a sum, represented by a union of two to the power of n, uh, brought together by the circle operator. This sum is multiplied by three times n plus i, all cubed. It's like adding together a series of boxes, each one larger than the last, and each one containing a number that's been manipulated in a specific way. Now consider another set, an open union from a to b, with a function g of the integral from 1 to n, raised to the power of i minus 1, multiplied by db. This is all within the set of n, raised to the power of i, raised again to the power of i, with the help of c to the power of x. It's as if we're taking a journey, moving from one point to another, and along the way we're picking up different elements and combining them in unique ways. Next we encounter a special set. This set is a closed intersection of different indices with a vector of e indexed by r minus 1 multiplied by f to the power of i minus 1 and equaling the vector of e with index t. This is all multiplied by the sum of z sub r from 0 to k minus 1 and multiplied by 1 minus r sub r with indices i and z sub r. All of this is within the intersection which we define as lf1. It's like a treasure hunt where we're searching for specific values within a particular set, and each value has its own unique characteristics. Now let's move on to two functions, f and g, with a unique input. This input is a union from a to r, multiplied by a product of upsilon and some complex terms represented by sigma, delta, and omega, all raised to various powers. This is all multiplied by the intersection of omega and alpha, and then summed to equal one. Finally, we come to the symbols of mirrors and sums. For a matrix M sub N operating as a mirror, the cardinality of the intersection with its double subscript is equal to the cardinality of the intersection of, say, F sub gamma times the cardinality of M sub iota I underscore 1 along with the cardinality of M sub nu I sub JJ. But when we consider the sigma sum S sub N, the cardinality of its intersection is not equal to the cardinality of, say, F sub gamma times the cardinality of S sub N with its subscript X sub 1. And lastly, for a binary sigma truncated sum B sub N, the cardinality of its intersection will be the same as the product of all possible alpha N sub I of alpha. So, what have we learned? The cardinal flow exponentials are a complex but fascinating journey through mathematical concepts combining sets, functions, sums, and more. Their mysteries are hidden within their intricate structures, waiting for us to unravel them. As we continue to explore, we find that each new concept brings us closer to understanding the beauty and complexity of the cardinal flow exponentials.